Hey, I'm Grant, and welcome back. We're going to play some Dead Rising Shops of Drop. So, there's actually something I wanted to show off I noticed, because my controller batteries died, and I actually had to do this all over again. Cletus does have books now, and if I recall, you essentially have so many book slots, and that's something you get from leveling up, and you buy these and equip them. It's kind of interesting because basically the what they did in this game is that books are basically a little bit more required since they don't have to have the same inventory as your food and your guns, I don't think, or rather it, that inventory doesn't matter as much like it does in the original Dead Rising. They the books are a little bit different. Like individually I'd say the books really aren't worth it if they were in a dead like say Dead Rising 1 just because like they don't do nearly the same effects. Instead, you'll like get a skill. Like I think there was like the suplex skill that just lets you do that when you get the prompt. I'm sure there's some that are actually particularly good. There's also that toy laser sword one, which I'm guessing is probably like, oh, maybe there's one or two you want to grab because you know you really like that weapon and that's what you do. But I don't know. I'll Let me know if you want me to try testing some of those. I'm pretty sure it's not usually worth it because you basically, you have to still get the prompt. Like, you unlock the ability to, but without me knowing how to actually set up the situation, some of those moves are just really rare, and I don't particularly... I'm not going to go out of my way to figure those out, because I don't actually think they're worth it. It's just... It's like when you play Dead Rising 1 originally. There's so many moves, and actually, there's some amazing moves that have some very amazing uses in Dead Rising 1, but no one ever really knows them. If you are a fan of Dead Rising 1, I heavily recommend Disembowel. Always a big one. You can use it on the Special Forces. Obviously, the knee drop. The melee move system in Dead Rising 1 was really good, and it's actually, honestly, really powerful. Like, obviously, you have your double lariat and stuff, and your other big basics. But I gotta say, when I went through and I tested a whole bunch of them, I was amazed at some of the uses they had. Man, these are actually, like, really good. But I think it suffers from the fact that they all have, like, the same button combinations, and they all suck. And there's just no way around that, where every single one is like, oh, it needs to be hold A and B while in front of the zombie and not touching the control stick. And then another one will be while touching the control stick in a certain manner. This so I looked into, as part of that last episode, I talked about how they have all these hidden missions, which are just missions from the first game, or the original game, that they made hidden. And you have to do certain things to unlock them. And as part of that, I was looking into some of the other weird additions to this game, and there are things I'm going to get to, but it's after overtime mode. There's a ton of these weird quests that aren't timed. It'd be like doing like these missions, and they're entirely unique to Dead Rising Chop to you drop. There's nothing like it in any of the games. So I really want to show that because they range from being like kind of dumb, like, okay, kill every zombie in the food court as fast as you can. That's something where it's, it's not really that interesting, but if this is your only game, it's probably actually is a really fun challenge. But then there's also one that's like, Cletus takes you out to the park here, and he does basically clay shooting. He throws zombies and random objects into the air, and you have to shoot them really quickly. It's like, is this still Dead Rising 1? That's radically different. Goddamn. So I always try to get like worked up before I record these, just so I can be a little more energetic. Oh, they move these guys. Oh, that's right. And as part of that, that makes me gesture a lot, and that doesn't work with these <laughs> Wiimotes. So they're going to run away from me. I always forget that. I guess they don't run away from you in the main game, do they? They just refuse to move. This is interesting, though, because I always did think that it was a little easy that you're going to go do the scoop and you were in the bookstore, so you just run, like, ten feet. Not ten feet, ten steps over and just grab the book. That is kind of dumb. So I guess here you just have to know that, oh, you need the book. And I'm guessing, I know, how to, I, I know how to do this, but I'm guessing that if I just talk to them long enough, then that would actually give me a prompt to go here. And I bet this is actually the tutorial on books, because that's why I just recently unlocked them. And I think this way might explain that why books are a thing. Like, I already got the prompt essentially telling me how to use books. But I'm guessing maybe it would have happened right there if I hadn't already done that. I'm actually like super spooked because like I don't consider Dead Rising 1 to be particularly scary and I think part I think partially a lot of that is just you know over time you get desensitized to that kind of stuff but I was filming here and I probably heard like a knock at my door and like no one was there and it was kind of creepy. So now they should talk to me. Doesn't explain why they don't want to run away. I mean, obviously, it's just so you can actually talk to them. God damn. 
you know, as weirdly as this game is, it is a kind of a cool little attention to detail that they actually turn and talk to each other. And maybe that's just because they need to make it a little bit more obvious than it was originally, but that is really kind of a nice little detail. This game has gotten so much harder as I've been playing it. I don't know why, like, I don't think they're spawning more zombies. I think, it almost seems like they're just being a little bit more of a dick about it where you can't walk around them. So I think maybe, I wonder if they put a little bit more thought into where the zombies are than Vigil Dead Rising? Because it does seem like it spawns in a specific circumstance. God, that, <laughs> that dude's got balls. I'm like firing like right over his head. There we go. Oh, that's cool. The uh, zombies are actually called Joe. That's nice attention to detail. It wouldn't make any sense in the context of this game, right? There's no reason for that zombie to have a name. But I guess you gotta call it something. This weapon is one of those where it's so interesting. I know it's something that they totally wanted to like show off way more, but in Dead Rising 1, in actuality, you like never get this thing. So I want to see... Oh, <laughs> I'm actually really surprised they show this much. Not because it's gory, but like this weapon is just all about like these particles. You better die. There we go. Awesome, awesome. I was really afraid because either the, this weapon was either going to do a ton of damage with all these repeated hits or it was just going to suck. But anyway, what I was saying is this is an amazing weapon and there's like two places in the game where they have it. I think there's like Chris Lips and then maybe Outdoors somewhere. I think I'm not judged on their health, like if they just take damage and even if I heal them or if they come in hurt. I don't think that matters, but I haven't checked. I thought about maybe trying to give this game like a speedrun. I watch a ton of speedruns over on like say Games Done Quick or just individual things, like especially stuff like as I as a kid played a lot of. Going back and watching someone else just demolish them is amazing. Stuff like uh, Spire of the Dragon, Ape Escape is super cool to watch and it's nice and efficient. I don't have to listen to a boring ramble. There's a guy who knows exactly what he's doing and that's kind of cool. As part of that, I kind of wish I had like one game that I was like, it was like, that's my thing. And Honestly, that would have been Dead Rising 1, but obviously you can't speedrun Dead Rising 1 just because of the whole timer aspect. I have a bad habit of not paying attention to what's going on with those guys. And I really need to fix that because otherwise I'm going to have the situation with the lovers again where like, okay, we're doing fine, we're doing fine. Oh, uh oh, someone died. Shit. I think they overdo the, like the poodles and stuff in the park just because otherwise the large open space is just going to be too easy. So this is something, I don't, I'm not a Wii gamer, I never owned the Wii, although people keep giving me Wiis, it's very specific. But one thing I never noticed is the Wii's fucking loud. I don't know why, it's just loud. This little motor that vibrates the controller in the Wiimote makes a ton of noise. And I just have the Wii like freestanding on my entertainment center, and that thing has its fans just cranked. I guess maybe it's got like dust or something. Where are you? He should be like, oh, wait, is he stuck on the tree? He's probably like following me somewhere and I just can't see him. It is an issue telling the zombies apart from the humans. <laughs> I guess humans might not be distinctive enough because they all look the same when you can't make out their faces. Like over off in the distance, you just see the silhouettes. And I guess they kind of fix that because the zombies obviously shamble, but it's definitely an issue that I'll like run by because I don't actually see my survivors. And that wasn't an issue at all in Dead Rising 1 because you had the health bars, but Maybe it's also just the lowered yeah. resolution and stuff. Buddy, help me. I have totally fully committed to using the guns though. They are obviously the way to go. And clearly what the game's built around is they expect you to be using guns all the time. I haven't found a good way to get ammo though. So I don't know. I think there's obviously got to be an answer. You can't buy it from Cletus and I guess you could f essentially grind it. I don't know where you'd necessarily do that. I know you can get it from Cletus's area, not like buying it. There's boxes and vases. And if you break those open, which is hard, I can only, the only thing I know of right now on how to do that is I guess by shooting them, which is redundant because I need the ammo. But I guess if you needed ammo, like if you're playing on some really hard challenge or difficulty, you might want that. This is fun though. I actually really do like this shooting mechanic. I actually, I would look where to get ammo up if I could. One thing I noticed, and the, one of the reasons I wanted to do this series to show off Dead Rising Chopped Drop is there's not a lot of info on this game. And the stuff that is, is like these super shitty template pages on these random sites. It's like, imagine you have like GameFAQs and IGN, and then imagine like a copy of that, and then a copy of that, and that's what these, those are like the only sites that have any info for Dead Rising Chopped Drop. And even then, 
all the info clashes with each other. Like one will call this, like there's quest mode. Another one calls it like additional tasks. It's really weird and I can't find a straight answer. The wiki isn't helpful at all, really. I think it's because it clashes so much with the main Dead Rising game that you can't actually get any of the info you need. I do think it was a bad design though that it takes two headshots to kill a zombie. I always thought this was such a cool idea for a scoop though because this entire game is essentially, it's a Japanese made game and I'm not gonna say it's like a commentary or anything on American culture, but it was a thing that they had to go like study American malls and all this like research they did. And that's how this was built. And that's super cool. And I always felt that that specific quest, like this specific one was must've been like how they felt making that journey. And there's not that much, I guess, flavor in this quest. They just talk and then you escort. But I, I imagine that it had a lot of personal appeal to them. So if I can find food, I'm gonna save this guy. But I, it was a thing before where it's actually really hard to find food. Like in Dead Rising 1, generally if you go in stores, like every other store has a snack or something to give you. There's a lot of stores in this game that there's no just way. nothing. This is a thing I want to rant about and I thought about doing a series where I just kind of like bitch about things in games because I feel like I've been saving that up. And one of the things is just how many games have just like bullshit minutia? Like, I get mechanically why they have all those barriers there to make you go to certain places. Like, to make it a little bit more difficult and what have you. The one thing I hate so much is just having to go from point A to point B and just holding up on the controller. I would hate to see that stat of just how long my, in my life was just me holding up on a controller waiting to get from point A to point B. It's fine if it's, oh, I'm getting through zombies. That's gameplay. That's what I'm here for. But it just sucks when, oh, like here. If there's nothing between me and the door, it just sucks for me to have to run forward like that. I've been debating what missions I want to do because I really want to experience the changes, like the small stuff, like, oh, the book's in a different location. That's super interesting to me. But honestly, I will say the escorting is kind of grinding on me. Or just like the minutia. That's really what's getting me is just the small minutia of, oh, one little hit, another little hit. It's like, God damn it. So if I'm using my actual, God damn it. I'm using my Dead Rising lore. Hello. There should be food in the stairway. Or over by the bathrooms. What is he doing? Is he just taking damage because he's far away? Because it's like really slight. Oh, thank you. So, I guess I gotta heal him. Heal him. And I can find some more for myself. I doubt there's gonna be anything in here. Although I could save. What would that even do? Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I did not, I did not think that through. Oh, awesome. It actually pops me right back here. I was afraid it was going to be way back at the start of the mission. It's actually kind of a problem, in my opinion, how you have to do these one-on-one. -on -one. So, like, I can't do two scoops at the same time. Because it's just, it's so freaking inefficient. And it's not any kind of difficulty or anything. It's just, I don't want to have to keep running all the way through the park. And I can use the shortcut and stuff, but even then, like I've done it before. I don't want to keep doing it. There's so much time in this game that's just me running around. And there's probably no food in here still because of that one gourmet scoop. So I got to get up to that one plaza or hopefully he dies. This dude has been on that like last 10% for a long time. I'm guessing this is kind of like when you leave someone into a in a different loading zone in Dead Rising 1 where it's just like attrition damage. I think that's what's happening with this guy right now. Holy shit. There's a setting. You can change the brightness. Okay. Cool. Hold on. Let me out this in general a little bit. Huh. I, I haven't actually looked through these audio settings or any of these settings. Blood settings. Huh. Weird. This game's weird. I want everyone just like to see this timer and appreciate how long it's just taking this guy to die. And this goes back to why I think this game is really built around the experience of like escorting these guys, not necessarily the absolute challenge. Like they want you to go back and get them. So I think they kind of delay it but make it look like it's way worse than it is. Because then you have the experience of him getting lost and having to go back. I kind of also ran about this, like literally I'll just turn around and just spawn zombies in on me. So now there's one zombie. Still one zombie. Now there's no zombies. Take one step, now there's five zombies. 
it gets super annoying. Actually, honestly, I feel like you might be well off just to like look at a wall. <laughs> God, curse myself. Look at this. See, now there's just zombies. It, it really sucks. Like, I think what I need to do is, maybe not look at a wall, I just need to stand with my back to the wall and look out on just some area. Although, based off the fact that zombies are popping in there, I wouldn't put it past this game to just, like, spawn a zombie right in front of you. Like, boop, there's one. There's one right there now. There we go. That took so long. So long for that guy to die. Finally. I don't, I don't know how much of that I'm going to cut. I just essentially just messed around. I learned a bunch of stuff. Like, I was going through the menus. I was just trying just different random things. But, man, I, I can't believe it took so long. Although, I will say, honestly, if this was changed and I wasn't recording, I actually kind of would like that mechanic. Because the game does try to help you. Because, again, it's, this game's built to give you a good experience. So, for me trying to game it is kind of what I think makes it be so weird. Because I know, oh, there's no reason for me to go save that guy. It's weird because I always sit down and I actually, I enjoy these recording sessions. But sometimes, certain things about this game, like, I just can't stand. Like, one of the things I want to rant about is minutia is how many fucking times have I had to walk just from the elevator to here and then they took too long. And I pretty much always cut this out. Just because it's like, there's no interesting content here. Except for now. And it's just like... I have played so much Dead Rising, I, I'm i sure I have, I don't know, let's say, if I had to take a guess, 10 hours doing just that, and it's just like, I don't want to do that anymore. Just cut straight to.